This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Without a healthy mind, being happy is hard. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny and see if online therapy is for you. What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games in an amazing sweater, Greg Miller. My dreams jumper. Thank you very much. Bought on the PlayStation Gear Store. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> it's good. It's real good. I, I love the colors. That It's a very, of course, the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez, colorway. That's why I love you. So, so don't be afraid. afraid. To let them show. Guys, there it is. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's too good. It's too good of a cover. Cover. Andy's trying to make it up because he was really mean to me on Slack. When we're doing meetings, a lot of times we're having a real conversation, and he like to slack me something mean to try to throw me off in my game, but it doesn't work. Tim. Oh no! Know that. Oh, that's that's sure, that's what happens. That's not mm-hmm. true at all. I told, I said, for what it's worth, blah 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 blah, and then Greg messaged me in Slack, in quotes, for what it's worth, don't interrupt me. <laughs> I, I didn't I do that. I didn't do that. This. There was no interruption. <laughs> this this budding like rivalry. There was one time, uh, I forget what it was, it was like Gamescast or something, where we start and I'm like smiling at the beginning and Greg messes me. He's like, wipe that smirk off your face. <laughs> <laughs> that voice you hear. I'm a fun course. boss, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new face of video games. Blessing at AOEA Jr. What's up, everybody? It's a good shirt, too. Nick Scarpino, big fan of that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Psych. Gotta mm-hmm. love it. Sean mm-hmm. Spencer. The other guy, <laughs> <laughs> Sean uh, uh, Blessing wore this shirt when we went to film the reveal of the new studio, and everyone asked him what the shirt was, and he was like, "Oh, it's a psych shirt. It's for I want. I, it's for Nick. It's mainly for Nick." And then Nick yeah. got there, and like Nick flipped out for the shirt, and it was so sweet. <laughs> it's like the yeah, one thing Nick Scarpino have in common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every love time, like we game. hang out, it just they, I see him in the corner, like so psych. What's up with that? <laughs> That's all I hear. It's not a whole lot of conversation between Blessing and Nick. Just you see that new episode? Like, you no. catch the new movie, the cycle <laughs> that drops once every three years. Oh, yeah, I caught it. It's, it's good, isn't it? Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Good. You heard about Pluto? That's a psych joke. <laughs> There you go. If you want to hear about Psych, you got to go on our other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kind of funny. But this is the kind of funny games cast where each and every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things that we love about them. You can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com. If you want to get it as a podcast, just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny games cast. We'll be right there for you. If you want to get the show ad free, if you want to watch live as it's being recorded, and if you want the exclusive post show, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like our Patreon producers, Tyler Ross, the kind of funny Destiny 2 PC clan, Julian, the gluten free gamer, Alex J. Sandoval, Techie Haas, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Elliot, and Brian Ward have all done, which means they're pr- Patreon producers and they don't need to listen to the ads for Honey, Freshly, and DraftKings that we're going to give you later in the episode. Greg Miller, I saw you had your hand raised. I just want to give a shout out. Uh, you said, you know, of course, you can watch this live as we record it on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, which is often true. Not today because of our review embargoes, but I would like to give a round of applause to Blessing at EOA Jr. Of course, on PS I Love You uh, last week when he was recording the episode, at one point, Barrett goes, yeah, and the chat's saying this. And Blessing goes, wait, we're live? <laughs> <laughs> and Barrett's like, yeah. And he's like, I didn't realize that at all. It's and like- I love that Blessing likes to work without a net that way, <laughs> not understanding <laughs> that it's being broadcast to an audience. I, I, I just love that because you were gone, Blessing was like, oh, yeah, everything's different. We're probably like not, uh, uh, not on air or anything. It it was- like well, some embargo. We inserted the Far Cry preview in there, so uh, I think that's, that's what led him to believe that it wouldn't be there because it was convoluted. That like you could say that we had seen Far Cry, but we couldn't say what we thought of Far Cry yet. Yeah, it was just a funny sense. moment. Listen, I'm putting together all this baby room stuff. Listening to this episode, <laughs> <laughs> and like, the kids say, "Wait, we're live." <laughs> I also want to shout out to me for winning the Gamescast Summer Game Fest final score, like for having the highest score out of all of us. Oh, that's not the topic There's of the no show. Way that's, true. that's not the topic of the show, and it's not to be. And, and, and me for having a 100% guess rate with my one yeah, guess. Wow, batting yeah. a thousand right, yeah, there. right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Do you have that pulled up by any chance? I sure do. Yeah, I won. I got a uh, 3.2 points. Uh, mm-hmm. Blessing came in second place with 3.05. Greg, wow. 2.5. No Tim, 1.9. And Barrett, 1. What put yeah, you but, over the edge? Because I, I, I would have sworn that I would have taken it away because I think I predicted Saints Row. Um, let's see here. Uh, the new scores came from Andy 
guessing that Pokemon Legends Ar Arceus was getting a dedicated direct. That's that's one that pushed me over the edge. And also, you uh, don't deserve the points for that. It did not get a dedicated direct. Boo, Andy! These results are garbage. Totally I mean, Agreed. that's where all the point. That's where all. That's how I have three point two. I'm assuming that's how Blessing has three point zero five. Mm -hmm. So well, Tim got extra points because of Lego Sc uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Greg got extra points because Horizon Forbidden West is not coming in 2021, which is confirmed sometime in his summer game fest. Probably a long blog post is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I won, though. That's crazy. Good job. There you go. Congrats Thank to you. Blessing, the, the true king of Halloween. Fuck off, Tim. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I mean, Greg, I, you're gone I, Greg, for October. It must be a sign that you're not the true king. I guess oh, it's going to be interesting oh, how much damn. Halloween shit I'm up to. I'm so into fucking Halloween. I had a baby. I made a baby to make sure this baby comes out around Halloween. I made Halloween. a baby. <laughs> made a baby so can escape Halloween. I'm kind of funny. I, I hear you. I, I would do the same thing if I was up against me. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, though. The boys are back. The four of us haven't done one of these shows together in a while. There's been a lot of this and that and a whole bunch of things going on. But here we are. And it's a mega games cast, everybody. Mega. It is the fall season which, of course, for video games means we're getting reviews left and right. We're getting some fun previews, and this episode is very special. We got not one, not two, but three reviews of some of the biggest games. And sure, that might mean they're some of the smallest games, but when it comes to video games, that's what's cool about them. Small things can be big, big things can be small. It's Hell whatever yeah. we want to do here. <laughs> so let's get it, go, it works right for gamers it. too, everybody. Don't worry. Don't just apply it to your video games. Yeah, apply it, it to your gamers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. What it really comes down to is no matter how small, no matter how micro things can be, mm. video games are still video games. And with mm. that, I want to talk about WarioWare Get It Together, Ooh. a video game full of micro games. I got to play it over the last week and a half or so. Uh, the new game coming to the Nintendo Switch. It is the first entry, first new entry in the WarioWare franchise in quite a while. We got the debut trailer for this during uh, E3 this year definitely was a huge surprise uh to all of us um this one was developed by nintendo epd who are the the team that we know as the splatoon people behind the the 3d mario games helping out assisting with a lot of like mario 3d world and mario odyssey and etc uh, etc cetera, et cetera, as well as trains exactly animal crossing the way nintendo's teams work there's a lot of collaboration so that, that was kind of the main team but also uh working with intelligent systems who are mainly known for the fire emblem games the warrior wario wear games and the paper mario games so this was kind of a i don't want to say all hands on deck type thing but it was some hands on uh, different teams hands on deck to make this uh, video game happen. It is a $50 title for the Nintendo Switch uh, coming out on September 10th. And I think that that is kind of my biggest criticism of the game is that $50 MSRP. Greg Miller, you had your hand raised. What's up? I was going to ask as the Nintendo expert, like what are the normal price points for WarioWare? I can't remember if they were like, you know, 10 bucks normal, less than a normal game or whatever. So WarioWare traditionally has been cheaper than a flagship Nintendo title. Um, and that's not always been the case. Like back in the day when it debuted, like Game Boy Advance, Nintendo games were already cheaper than other GBA games. If you remember, okay. GBA games were $40. Uh, Nintendo GBA games were $30. So the original Warrior was $30 on the GBA. But as we went on, even the GameCube release, that retailed for $30 at a time okay. when normal GameCube games were $50. So that was a $20 discount. That's a big deal, a big percentage back in 2003 or whenever that was, right? Sure, uh, Greg. I was going to say, and Greg, like, one thing you need to understand is Wario is a, he's kind of a diva, all right? Like, Wario's like, I'm not going on any, I'm not releasing a new game if I'm not an expensive title, all right? I I'm, okay. don't lessen okay. my impact here on this platform. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or it's, it's a troublemaker. It's a troublemaker, Greg. He is. He wants that money. You know, the game's about these that. these games are historically handheld. Like, there have been fewer console warrior wares, I want to say, than handheld mm -hmm. warrior wares. Well, don't yeah, forget and, that with the power of the Nintendo Switch, you can take your console anywhere, so it's kind of a true. handheld. And that's where it does get a little bit kind of iffy and the kind of... The, the, what it comes down to is the GameCube one, uh, what came out, and then years later, there was the, the Wii U one that was kind of a different, semi-different, type of game than we're used to seeing with the the WarioWare franchise and then a couple of years ago i think it was three years ago we got one on the 3ds called WarioWare gold that was essentially a greatest hits of all the the different games and even that was 40 dollars which 3ds game is a little bit cheaper so that makes sense but this is a 50 dollar title on the nintendo switch and uh like i said earlier i think that is the biggest criticism i have of this game it's a really damn good game 
And the more I played it, the more I ended up enjoying it. I was kind of down on it uh, the first bit as I was playing through it. There was things that were off-putting. The art style really kind of bothered me. Not of the levels. They're very classic WarioWare, and it makes sense. But of the characters themselves, they're kind of cheapified in a way. And they kind of have that, like, Marvel's What If slash Rooster Teeth's mm. Ruby 3D animated look uh, for the characters themselves. And I okay. I didn't like it. I, I thought it looked kind of cheap. It looked like it didn't look as refined as the things I just mentioned. And it looked kind of like old Flash New Egg style animation. Uh, but as I played a little bit like, yeah, uh, Bear just brought it up here. You can kind of see it. But seeing it in motion after the first like 10, 15, 20 minutes or so and seeing how these characters kind of uh, stand out with the backgrounds that are absolutely chaotic in classic WarioWare fashion with a bunch of different uh, art styles that don't necessarily vibe with each other. I actually think it worked out. Like, I think that they they made wise decisions and it ends up not looking cheap and it, it ends up seeming like a decision as opposed to a, uh, you know, kind of a, a letdown to me. So I, I was happy with that. Uh, but this this game, I think, is going to speak very loudly to fans of WarioWare. If yeah. you've liked WarioWare before, you're going to have a good time with this game. If you've never really interacted with the WarioWare before, this is actually a fantastic entry to it. I think that it kind of teaches you how to play these games, how to get used to it very quickly, and has a, a nice range of micro games to play that keep you engaged. Because at the end of the day, if you guys don't know, if you haven't played WarioWare, which honestly is one of those franchises that you've either known and loved or have never given a shot and Not seen and heard about it's a big have you have you ever tried it before andy N never tried it never had any interest in it it always just looked like a silly thing that would just honestly at that point i was like you know when parents said video games are a waste of time i think this <laughs> i get it you know uh-huh yeah, yeah so i get that so the, the the pitch to you and the pitch to people that might not exactly understand what this game is it's a series of what are called micro games where you play these rounds that are about four to five minutes long you're going through anywhere between 10 and 20 of these micro games that all last 10 seconds or less. And they're weird as hell, but most of them boil down to move to a part of the screen and hit a hit a single button. Any button does the same thing and uh, cause something to happen. So we're, we're seeing here. It's like shoo the flies away from the cake and it's just cool. Get to the, the flies and get them to go away uh, here. It's like unplug this thing so the water can go down. And really what it comes down to is your reflexes of how quickly they're telling you the instructions and then you figuring it out and acting on that thing before the time runs out about halfway through the round everything speeds up and you have to do things at an even quicker pace uh to be able to win and you have like five lives in this round and every time you lose you lose one of those lives you don't get to retry the challenge if you lost it you just get you keep moving on and it's frenetic, fast-paced, non-stop nonsense. It's chaos, and it is something that you kind of need to just realize you're in this, you're moving forward, and if you make a mistake, don't worry about it too much. You just got to keep going. But if you run out of lives, you got to start from the beginning again and do the whole round over again. They're randomized. Uh, every round has a set of like 20 or so micro games that it randomizes for you, and you're getting into them in and out super quickly. Andy Cortez from kind of funny. And all these little these little freaks on screen right now, all these little <laughs> other characters, like what what's their deal? Are they like why couldn't they just put a little Mario in the well, ocean? Because these are Wario's friends. Well, that's one way to put it. Uh Wario <laughs> where War, <laughs> Wario's co-workers that don't necessarily like him much is another way. Uh but uh. for people familiar with the WarioWare franchise, these are kind of established. Wario is loved. Oh my god. I thought I mean, that was some audio drop in. That was weird as hell. That sounded so. I don't know fun. who did that. That's weird. We got hacked. <laughs> we got hacked. <laughs> Zoom bombed. These are like beloved WarioWare characters, Andy. Like all of them okay. kind of have these personalities, and they've been in in all of the games in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I recognize the Disco Man with the blue fro. Exactly, my boy Jimmy. Yeah. But what's cool about it is every <laughs> round, Jimmy. like I was talking about, uh, has these like story beats that play, like cutscenes that play before it to kind of set up the character um and they remind me so much of elite beat agents that kind of like chaotic energy and just nonsense but like it's fun and you're either weird in nintendo. or you're <laughs> super weird nintendo stuff and and that's the thing that's what this game is to its core it's just nintendo being weird and quirky and in some ways it really works in some ways it's really cringy in some ways it's for kids and in some ways it's not at all but i think it kind of comes together to work really well 
where if one thing doesn't work for you, the next thing's going to because it's it is just such nonsense, but like it's a consistent nonsense that's moving so quickly that it's more about the energy than it is about anything else. And that's an energy that's backed up with an actually really, really, really good vision and sense of identity that is so hard to explain until you play it for a little bit. And then you can really wrap your head around, okay, cool. Like all these musical cues and like random ass art that wouldn't ever go together in any other place kind of works and kind of vibes. And you're always interested to see what's coming next. Um, the one difference between this game and the other WarioWare games, Andy, uh, time with the characters, is they're all playable characters. And the gimmick of this iteration is that in the beginning of the game, no spoilers, like the story is that you get sucked into this game and all the characters get like cheapified to have the, the art style that I was talking about. And uh, you you start off with Wario. And as you progress through the game, you're unlocking, you know, tens of other uh, characters from the Warrior universe to play as each character plays slightly differently so it's all the same thing where you move with the analog stick and there's one button that does stuff but Wario you control him he has a jetpack so he can kind of fly around like you're playing a, a shmup uh, and you hit a and he has this charge attack and he just kind of charges a little bit ahead of him but then other characters will be able to not like to just jump, they can't fly, but they can shoot something. Other characters can only shoot left. Other characters are constantly bouncing up and down, but you can hit A and have an attack that kind of goes around you. Ashley here that uh, was flying on the broomstick, she's more of like, uh, you can go all around the screen, like top-down shooter style, shoot in any direction you want, but she's kind of slow. So it's all the exact same idea of movement and one attack, but it's every variation possible as you're going through these characters. And where it gets interesting is you unlock the characters one by one as you go each level. Every level you play, you can't just play as one character. You choose three different characters from a Smash Brothers type character select screen and you make your team. Then when you go in to play the actual micro games, every micro game switches what character you are. So you choose your team of Wario, Ashley, and gotcha. Jimmy. So you want a good team comp. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're playing through these micro games and you might get set up in a micro game because it shifts. You don't get to choose. It's your sure. three. You're constantly round one's Wario. Round two is Ashley. Round three is Jimmy. And then it flips and just keeps going back and forth. Since the micro games are randomized, you can't really prep for like who's best for this. So sometimes you might be in a micro game that your character is completely ill suited for what you're trying to do. And you can always complete it with any character but it's severely more difficult with certain characters Got it. and with that that's where the the fun for me kind of came as somebody that has always liked wireware but never been the biggest fan i thought that this added a level of complexity and interest for me of like oh shit there's this level of going into a, a different micro game where i'm like oh shit i'm going into this with eight volt that's not good it's one level and, deeper than and it adds this it level of, of challenge on top yeah. of the already frenetic kind of thing going on um, on top of just kind of you have like three seconds before the micro game starts where you see what character you have where you get to like hit a to kind of remember what ability they have and it works really well that when you hit this point of kind of when you get in the flow the gaming flow of playing these micro games that are going so fast in the flow it, state it's, it's switching characters like left and right when you see a character and your brain immediately is like okay i, I shoot left with this one or oh I, I can jump higher with this one and you can do the challenge it's super satisfying greg are there so many characters that it like takes you a long time to figure this out though and know their strengths weaknesses all just yes there are there's okay. a ton of characters and that's kind of the point i mean you can see here this is a a, a fair amount but a fraction with all the the questions there are Sure. There's a, a good amount of characters that it's never overwhelming. Okay. And you pretty quickly understand they fall into, it's kind of like Smash Brothers where sure there's 50 characters or more than that at this point, but they all kind of fall into some type of trope where it's like, okay, if you know how to play Marth, you know how to play a percentage of the cast. If you know how to play Samus, you can play a percentage of the cast type thing. Uh, so it's similar here, but everything's so simple where it's not like every character has a move set. It's one move. So it really becomes okay. about identifying like 
what is that one character able to do that others aren't? Um, or, or how are they different than the other characters? Because all the micro games are the same. Like, it's it's not like they add that many layers of complexity. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, like, I, I'm, I'm going long on this, but really just want to get it across. This is a really good WarioWare game. I just think that there is not enough content to be able to justify a $50 price point for this. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. if this was $30, I would be like, highly recommend it is a blast it is a very very polished game it is a lot of fun i had a blast playing it for about four hours and i can't see myself wanting to go back too much more there was a ton of challenges there's missions there's some multiplayer stuff um and i played a little bit of it and some of them you can play single player some you can't and they definitely tried to add as much content as they can to what makes this core game work um and i went i went this whole time without even talking about what everyone's favorite part of wario Ray games are is the picking nintendo classics oh. what do you say greg picking your nose there's a lot of picking your nose uh and as much as i love that oh, i definitely yeah. love the nintendo classic levels more and uh the you know the amount of nintendo classic levels they have in this i was very well, impressed what does by. that mean what does that so, mean there is there is a a set of levels that are based on their micro games based on nintendo games so oh, here okay. you see it's mario land right or yeah. There's other ones where uh, I don't want to spoil anything because like that okay. is a lot. A to give an example from like WarioWare Gold, right? Because that's the one that I just have in the mem- memory bank is like, you know, you'll play as uh, Link and Wind Waker and you're uh, you've got the cloth and it's blowing. Uh, the wind is going in a certain way. You have to you have like three seconds essentially to land on a platform. If you don't get on uh, on top of the platform in a certain amount of time, it, like you'll lose. So yeah. it's like little like fun little interpretations. It's like of, NES Remix, but even more y- micro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also not tied to NES. So that's what's coolest is without spoiling anything, I was shocked at some of the pulls they had. This this game has some really, really interesting Nintendo classics and what they do with them from a micro game perspective. I was like, whoa, y'all did it. That was awesome. I just wish it was the whole game. <laughs> like, I the- wish there was <laughs> a lot more of that. What are the expectations for multiplayer? Like, th- do you see this being a good experience for people playing co-op or versus? Like, I... Does it seem like a meaty enough experience? And is there online for it? So there is not online. Uh, There is couch co-op and it is uh, limited to certain modes. You can play the story mode with two players and that seems like it would be a ton of fun. Like I can totally imagine that being awesome. And like I said, that's four hours, but that could be a four hour experience that you have with multiple people and multiple family members like having fun with it. Like there is a value there. And I, I think that at the end of the day, it's a very good time. On top of the story, there's a separate uh, couple game modes. One of them is mainly focused on a multiplayer experience of up to four players. And those seem to kind of range, if I'm being honest, they're all kind of lame. Like everyone I played, I was like, this doesn't seem like something I'm, I'm interested in getting a group of people together to play. Some of them were fun enough and like they had elements and an aesthetic that are really cool. Like there's one that's very Smash Bros. elemented, like obviously based on it and i'm like oh this is actually kind of fun but i played for 10 minutes and i hadn't lost yet and i'm like well i feel like i can go with this forever and it's not really engaging or that fun and adding multiple like real players to it wouldn't really enhance it it just seems like more to do as opposed to like more worthwhile things to do so that that kind of i think is the the multiplayer side i think is kind of a bummer and they're not being online or any of that it's interesting because this isn't mario party like, I feel like a lot of people can look at WarioWare and be like, oh, it's just like Mario Party. It's not. It is very much a different experience that is almost more akin to something like Brain Age, where it's about your reflexes and about how quick you can just react to, to what's being thrown at you. And the things being thrown at you are very aesthetically pleasing and oh, weird and, and quirky and insane. Um, so that's kind of where the, the fun lies. And the, the worst thing is, like, I'm not allowed to talk about some of the coolest parts of the game because uh, of embargo stuff. Uh, but but even with that, I don't think that they're necessarily make this worth fifty dollars. Like I, I stand by at the end of the day, this is a fantastic thirty dollar game. Fifty dollars is just way way too much uh, for a WarioWare game coming out in the Nintendo Switch in twenty twenty one. Blessing. How does he use the Switch Joy Cons? Because like one of my favorite things about uh, WarioWare for we, I think it was Smooth Moves, was that everything was built around like using the Wemo in some different way, and so like you would have it so that the image would pop up on screen of like you know start with your remote on the table and then you would you would have to pick it up at a certain point does it have anything anything like that or any cool things that it does with the joy cons 
No. And I can't believe it. Like, wow, that's the really? Thing. I thought yeah. for sure you were going to yeah. say yeah. <laughs> no, man. And, and that's my thing where I'm like, this is, it feels kind of, kind of like a weird step for the franchise where they got rid of a lot of the gimmicks. And because of that, they made a game that I think works better than most of the WarioWare games. I think this is a better video game than most of the previous WarioWares. Mm-hmm. But, and, and, and the, the characters all having different skills that you need to learn, like that becomes the gimmick as opposed to controller stuff. So it still does have its gimmick and the gimmick works very well. It's just less kind of, you know, using the, the physical space. And you'd expect that from the, the switch with the, with all of its abilities and especially with the HD rumble and all that stuff. But no, it just, it doesn't at all. And there's even like some throwbacks and some like things you see in the game that reference old warrior wear games. And it reminded me, I'm like, yeah, like we used to have to twist our Game Boy Advance because yep. it had the, the gyro stuff and all that. And it's like, no, nah, you're, you're not doing that. Like every single game is you're moving around and attacking something in some shape or form. Like it's is not. That, is that them trying to harken back to GameCube WarioWare? Because that didn't really have that many gimmicks to it. Because that really shocks me, honestly. Yeah, kind of. But again, like there is the gimmick of the characters and I can't uh, talk about that enough. Like it changes things up and the there is a meta game to it of picking the right squad or just dealing with the situation you're given and picking this picking your nose baby right, exactly exactly yeah dude you know you got a chuckle out of that good <laughs> did. you uh, you brought it back you know i, right? I appreciate yeah. you bringing up the gamecube one uh blessing because that that was my favorite one growing up was uh what was the that one called i think mega party mega games. party games yeah um so i have a couple of questions just because I, I really love warioware uh a, WarioWare Gold for like the last like year or so, especially staying at home, has been my like what Andy was saying, like, let's waste some time. I've got like 20 minutes or like, you know, I'm going to bed, but I don't want to like sit down and like play something for the night. So like, let's see like what high scores I can get with all the unlocked games that I have. Um, So I imagine you're like unlocking uh, characters like uh, throughout the story mode and stuff. Is there similar stuff of like unlocking mini games as you see them for the first time throughout story mode? Because I feel like that was an element in some of the WarioWare games as well. Yes, there is. And everything you just said, Barrett, you're going to love this game. Like yeah. there is there is a, a lot of that, that high score chasing. Like I, I want to better. I want to like go through this again because I know like I had the wrong team. So I want to get the right team. <laughs> or eventually you, you can do a thing where you it's essentially random in Smash where like it just gives you like every time you hit a new micro game, it just gives you a random character to play with. Oh. And that's a lot of fun. And, and there's like a different kind of uh, high score meter for that gameplay okay so there there's a lot of reasons to replay it if you're pulled to do that Mm -hmm. it's just at the end of the day it's like it just comes down to the 50 dollars is a lot of money for what this game offers compared to what similar games have offered in the past and compared to what other games are offering right now gotcha but it is a very high quality thing and i just think that the the price point is its biggest misstep Otherwise, uh, this is my favorite WarioWare I've played. Wow. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of the franchise up until this point, so that's not like the most glowing recommendation, but I am surprised at how much I like it now compared to how concerned I was about it when I first saw the preview um, and how lukewarm I was when I first started playing. So there's some surprises. Um, there's some cool things, and like I said, some of the coolest moments I can't even talk about. So, Greg Miller. Do you think this was a good pick for my fantasy critic games cast league uh, draft order? I honestly think this game is going to review well. And I, I think that I'm going to be the only fucking real one that's calling out the $50 is too much. Like, I think that damn, people are just kind of going to let that slide, but I'm being honest. Sorry, like, Jonathan Dornbush. <laughs> no, it's just like, like, I mean, cause like I got, I, I faced a lot of criticism when I was talking about how new Pokemon snap was not worth the money, despite being an okay game. Uh, what, but I'm just keeping it real. This game is a very good game. It's much better than new Pokemon snap. There's a lot more to do in it. But still, like we just gotta call them out on their bullshit. Like fifty dollars is too much for this title. Did you did anyway? You beat you it in the four hours. Oh yeah. Oh damn. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that, but that's, you've seen all two hundred games. Being generous. That's being generous. But you've seen all two hundred games then. I I have not seen all two hundred games. I would say that uh, I'm even counting 
I played this game, I would say five hours total. About so 190, far. 190. And, and I'm probably around like one, 185, 190. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> of things unlocked. I, and, but like uh, also with the God. story yeah. mode, like the, I, I wouldn't say the story mode is ever like the pull and like the, the thing that of keeps course, you yeah. playing and stuff like that. Like that's the, uh, similar to like Smash Brothers, that's the place where you like unlock all of the cool stuff. So then you can go into like the high score modes and uh, which is the, the stuff that I love doing is just like trying to beat my high score. And even in this trailer that I see, here that I have pulled up like there seems to be some at least like you can uh, see your scores compared to other friends uh, for certain modes which will be like really exciting um, my last yeah. question uh, Tim was uh, you were talking about uh, multiplayer uh, and not being like super impressed like what they had to offer for multiplayer stuff and like my my entry point into WarioWare was the multiplayer for the GameCube version and I was just wondering if they have like uh, like a, I don't know if you can talk about it but just like at least like some sort of mode that'll be like entertaining to have like two or three other people to like where you're doing the same mini game and it's all about like kind of survival of the fittest of like kind of like seeing who can last passing all. back and forth because that's what i did in smooth moves was, like mm. there was I, I forget if this is a mode or if this is just like a How house rules kind of thing but i remember there being a thing of pass the limo back and forth mm. and whoever can can uh uh go the longest without failing a mini game wins the thing there's uh i think the game's gonna be really good for two players uh, there's a lot to do. It's gonna be a lot of fun for that type of co-op. Um, it, it's very like work to di- work together chaos, um, and it, it happens really quickly. It reminds me a lot of the fun we had playing Mario 3D World, like that type of energy, uh, just distilled into these little tiny micro games. In terms of the two to four players, they I would say half this game of at least half what they're trying to offer is limited to two to four players and doesn't seem great. Like, it just seems like stuff that's there to be there. Mm. Um, seems like decent versions of mobile games I've played a million times. Like, there's nothing too interesting. And it, it feels like content for content's sake, from what I experienced, uh, as opposed to the the quality that is in the, the main line, the storyline micro games, which I think okay. is really, really good. Well, as long as this is uh, another, you know, I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm just looking to kill some time and be another high scorer. I'm going to be happy. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that you can play on console or just play in your bed on the switch. Like I do think that goes a long way. Just again, $50 is not necessarily the right price point for that. Yeah. Greg, you had a, a final question for this. Before I, no, we move I just on? wanted to, it's a correction to myself. I'm sorry. Earlier when you said you were going to be the only real one, I called out Jonathan Dornbush. I texted Dornbush. He is in fact, not reviewing WarioWare. So I'm just going to say why Tom Marks, why not be a real one? Do I have You're to real text one, Tom, Tom now to Tom. make sure that Tom's not repeating? I mean, that's door push. If he's wrong on that fact, that's not, that's right, not on okay, me. Aaron's okay. taking out a door push. Moving on from WarioWare, get it together. I want Greg Miller and Blessing at AOEA Jr. to tell me all about Life is Strange, True Colors. Life is Strange, True Colors, Cast you is Alex Chen, a girl out of Juvenile Hall and all that jazz, out on her own, finally reunited with her brother Gabe. Uh, and would you narrate like the trailer or the fuck? <laughs> 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 the really Wikipedia good pages I go. Um, I think you know before we even jump into that, I want to put on the record that you know I love Life is Strange. Uh, I'm a Life is Strange fan. Uh, I've enjoyed all the games that I've played so far from them. And, and I, when we talk about this, I know it's going to be a broad topic. Obviously, there's no spoilers for Life is Strange: True Colors. But also, I'm going to switch back and forth talking about obviously Life is Strange: Before the Storm and Life is Strange 2, which of course uh, Don't Nod uh, obviously made Life is Strange. Then Before the Storm was by Deck Nine. Then back to Don't Nod for Life is Strange 2. Now Deck Nine here working on uh, Life is Strange: True Colors. Uh, Life is Strange: True Colors is probably, yeah. I mean, in terms of things we've reviewed or whatever, it's my game of the year so far. Um, yeah, I, you know, I was texting blessing at the end of every episode. Again, it's episodic like other life is strange is before it. Uh, however, this time around it is all released at once. So we're not waiting for anything. So five episodes. And at the end of every episode, I would text blessing something or some other co- comment about it. And mainly it was this feeling of, I did not want this game to end uh, yep. blessing. Am I crazy? No, I think you're 100% spot on with like the not wanting this game to end. Uh, I'm right there with you that, this game, this game is for sure like somewhere in the top of my game of the year list. I don't know exactly where it falls, but I was not, I didn't have high expectations. If I'm being really yeah. honest about Life yeah, Strange and Colors, like going into it, it, you know, it's Deck Nine. Life Strange as a series has been passed back and forth between Deck Nine and Don't Nod. And when I think of the Life Strange I love, I do think of the original Life is Strange. Life Strange One is one of my 
favorite games of the last decade. Life Strange Before the Storm, I also really liked as well. And then Life Strange 2, I played episode one and then I fell off. One, because the release cadence of Life Strange 2 just wasn't great. I think it was like three or so months between episodes. But then also the the first episode I didn't fall in love with. And so I had kind of I'd kind of been tapped out of Life is Strange and hopping into this one. By the time I finished episode one, I was immediately pulled in in a way that I wasn't expecting, especially because Life Strange True Colors starts off pretty slow in terms of, you know, you're playing as Alex Chen. You're arriving in a small town. You're like you're getting acclimated. You're meeting characters. And the game has a really laid back uh, tone to it where it does feel like you're hanging out in this hipster small town in Colorado. Like I, I assume that it's probably based off of Boulder or some random like uh, like it, it very much has that has the vibes of something like Boulder, Colorado, uh, but even smaller. And so like you get there, you're hanging out, you're meeting characters and it's a very slow burn in that first episode. But by the time the first episode ends and gets into the, the, the next episode, I was fully pulled in in a way I was not expecting. Yeah, I'm with you actually that, you know, it, I am a Life is Strange fan. So you tell me you're making new Life is Strange. I'm interested. I'm going to play it. I'm going to be excited. But I was in the same boat of nothing I had seen had made me go, oh, this is going to be something that's super special. In fact, actually, I think, honestly, the setup of who Alex is on paper might have turned me off in terms of her powers, right? Oh, Where yeah. you figure, of course, uh, in Life is Strange 1, we are max, we could rewind time before the storm, no powers. <laughs> and then uh, Life is Strange 2, it was telekinesis from our brother. We actually weren't the superpowered individual that was doing things. We were, you know, talking to our brother, uh, Daniel. And so to get to Life is Strange 2, and they're like, yeah, the hook is like, she's an empath. It's like, oh, okay. Like yeah, she my- can read emotions. My response was like, that's not a superpower. Like, we were talking about it on PS I Love You because the, the preview embargo was up and me and me and Janet were going back and forth on it because um, I had played a little bit of it. Uh, she hadn't, but I wasn't sure where the embargo was. And so I'll stick with my original thought of like, yeah, like um, uh, em- empathy as a superpower does nothing for me. Like, you know, Max in Life Strange 1 could rewind time. Uh, uh, the kid in Life Strange 2 uh, had telepathy. And, you know, Alex feels feels things that other people are feeling. And I'm like, actually, telekinesis. Uh, you know, I'm I, like, I have empathy. Like anybody I know has empathy, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> that's not a thing that that's not really a sell for me. But in practice, uh, you know, episode one, I think, gives you hints of, OK, I can see where this goes in terms of, oh, OK, this guy over here, she can feel the anger in him. So she kind of know she can kind of tell if he's bluffing or he can, she, she can kind of predict like what this guy's about to do. And like, you know, when there's emotion that's very strong, she also feels it very strongly. And so if there's somebody else in the room who is super angry, her uh, she too will be will feel super angry in the moment and might react because of that. And that gave birth to way more cool moments in the game yeah. than I really expected. The way that they use that in multiple different ways too throughout the story, I think builds towards something that not only is interesting in premise of, oh yeah, what does, you know, what can somebody do with this kind of power? But then also I think does a lot in terms of the tone of the game, you know, like it is, I I think this game does a really good job of handling emotion in a way that is very nuanced and thoughtful. Um, like, you know, when, whenever, whenever you're in a scene where like sad is assault, like I, I, I myself could feel that in the writing, not because of the uh, auras, which, if Alex sees somebody who's sad, right, usually they'll give off uh, a blue aura if they feel sadness intensely. If they're angry, they'll give off a red aura. If they're scared or something, they'll give off a purple aura. Uh, you know, that combined with, I think, how well or how good the writing is in any, in any given moment really conveys, like, oh, shit, okay, I, like, this person is angry, and I'm starting to feel tense myself as a player because I know this can give birth to a tense situation, or this person is sad, and so I want to go, I want to double-check on this person and talk to them if I'm just walking around in the environment to check up to see, like, okay, is, this, there, is there something I can intervene with? Like, maybe they'll still clue me, clue me more into what's going on in this town. Like, that kind of stuff I thought was actually really well done, uh, given the premise of the game being something that, for me, at first, I was like, oh, that's basic. Yeah, I mean, we've seen empaths, right? Like, you, I mean, we talk about Mantis and Guardians, right? Or something to that effect. And it's mm-hmm. like, Mantis is cool or whatever, but not in a way that, like, I would want... Uh, give me a Mantis single-player game, right? <laughs> and so, 
the way they use it here to m- marry what Life is Strange always has been, which is uh, environmental exploration, right? And then your relationships with people. I thought it was really well done to open up different pathways. And then obviously, if you've never played a Life is Strange, it's all about, you know, it's choose your own adventure. You, you choose what to say and when to say it. And that then influences and domino effects. And you end with different endings and different things that, you know, Bless has seen things that I haven't seen. We ended our games very different ways. I can't wait to, I want to do a spoiler cast maybe as like a, back half of a ps i love you we'll do that next week or something but that'd be awesome yeah like i thought yeah reading emotions of, oh this person's angry is what we we're gonna get right but instead it is very much you read that that person's angry and understand why they're angry and what they're doing right or why they're tense why they're scared and then that gives you new dialogue options to move it somewhere or which i wasn't expecting either different objects in the environment have strong emotions tied to them so you get to do that for your puzzle solving, for your story building, for your world building. And I think that as a Life is Strange fan who's played them all and beat them all, right? I enjoyed them all. Life is Strange 2 wasn't a slog to get through, but Life is Strange 2 was a game that ended and I didn't think about again. Whereas Life is Strange 1, and it's kind of cheating to toss before the storm in there, but I'm going to do it because it's all Arcadia Bay. It's all Chloe and Max's story, right? Or, or Rachel Amber too. Like, those are games that I finished and then ha- would have those conversations with people who, well, how did you do this? And what did you do this? And what do you think the real ending is? Right. And I'm such a dork that I buy the life is strange comic book, right. That had, does a whole bunch of different things with alternate realities that I think is super cool, but that's a story of a different time. What I think life is strange to missed so much was an anchor point of an environment and of a place. And what I can't compliment life is strange, uh, uh, uh true, colors true colors enough for is Haven ha- Haven. The town you are in ha- uh, is its own, character haven springs is its own beast its own character you are in it for all five episodes and i you know you'll go outside of town or in new locations and stuff but the town itself is a character which gives you such a grounding and then on top of that i think the game and haven springs and the characters and the models and all that is gorgeous like they i i there was you know multiple times in my playstation capture uh, media gallery is filled with screenshots granted mainly from cinematics and stuff but it's all in engine that i want to use as desktop backgrounds and I want to talk about how great this game is because i know it's in the title true colors right which of course is your true character then the aura has have colors but in general the way they use color in this game it is always saturated it is always beautiful it always feels like you are in this watercolor painting right and that the movie poster <laughs> yeah it marries so well with alex's story this cool quaint town all the people that are in it like it's for in terms of what i want out of a life is strange like it's 10 out of 10 in terms of its characters in terms of its plot points in terms of its art in terms of everything that's going on blessing and i both had the same thing blessing texted me about it first because he started he's like what is up with the frame rate of this yeah and when i started it it was jarring as well it's i don't know if it's a frame rate thing or if it's just animation style but like see like i like after episode one i didn't notice it anymore episode episode one i was like what is up with the frame rate in this game this game is this game running at 20 frames per second what is going on (laughs) and i i like i like part of me is like did they push an update because i stopped noticing it but i would every now and then i'll stop and move the camera and be like no i think it's still there but maybe it is the art style Um, i think it's our adjustment to it yeah yeah and our adjustment to it and how much they're pushing it pushing it visually because this is easily by leaps and bounds the best looking life is strange game like the i mean greg talking about the colors right like the colors and the just the details of uh it being located in a small town in colorado so seeing the mountains in the background seeing the uh, haven springs has a lot of uh like gardeny type stuff going on there's flowers there's uh uh, like a lot of you know beautifully colored flowers right like uh, uh, there's there's a lot of vibrancy going on in this town and i totally dig it talk about the flowers bless you (laughs) (laughs) the the flowers are fire man i actually love the fire the, the flowers in this game um but like you know the funny thing is this game takes place in pretty much one block for the most part every now and then you go and you you you, you go off into somewhere else but for the most part you're walking back and forth between a block and that is something that life strange before it did not do um life strange one you know you go to school you go to uh chloe's house you go to max's house and you have all these different locations that the game will pop you into this whole game for the most part you're walking down one street one block and at first, I didn't love that. At first, I was like, oh, that's kind of lame that they're trapping me into this one location. And I would get into situations where uh, I would have the objective of, hey, go to the flower shop and talk to this person. And I'm like, where the fuck is the flower shop? I'm like walking back and forth. And I finally find them. I'm like, okay, cool. And then they're like, okay, cool. Go and talk to Steph. And I'm like, where is Steph? How do I find this person? 
But by chapter three, I pretty much memorized the block in a way yeah. that really made Haven Springs feel like an actual location. I could go to the record store if I wanted to. I could go to the flower shop. I could I could find the park. I could find where any single person is hanging out because I know that certain characters will hang out in very similar spots. And that kind of thing I really adore because so much of the game does have to do with uh, home and community in a way that I was, wasn't expecting. Again, like Gabe Chen being an outsider to this community and having to kind of uh settle in in circumstances that i think are kind of stressful to the entire town it was very interesting to have that because uh you know greg you meant i, I think you mentioned that like she came from well like uh like juvenile detention I yeah, missed, yeah, like, yeah. A lot of that stuff. you said gabe that's her brother right he's already oh, been sorry, there yeah, for a while Alex. but it's they have similar stories they both show up as strangers and you know become family in the town yep. or whatever but yeah she's coming out of a facility right she's 21 yep. she's just restarting her life her and gabe have been separated i want to say it was for eight years is what he said yeah, at the beginning right that they haven't seen each other for eight years because they both got put into the foster care system and stuff like that and yeah again to blessing's point and i i think you know to talk about it as one street sounds like we're saying putting it as a negative or making it feel small but it's almost and it's not 100 but it's almost one street of free roaming right where it's like you can go into those buildings you can interact you can go to your room you can go to the rooftop you can branch off of main street and go into the park you can go down to the dock you can go to these things and if you never play a life is strange you're like all right whatever about it that's not how the other games have been right where it was life is strange one was like cool this scene is taking place at the school you are in the school like you can't leave the school do what you need to do in the school before you advance the plot to go somewhere different that makes this place feel alive but then it is also that you know reward of what life is strange is of branching out and talking to side characters and seeing how they change the world right of like there's all these different people that aren't main characters that you can listen into and then guide them along you know through multiple episodes what's going on to get them to a goal that'll change the area or you know there's a no spoilers obviously there's a big well not that you would know but it doesn't matter there's a spring festival there's like a big party they're doing at one point right and early i did the whole life is strange thing you always do in these games where i explore i look at everything i listen to everybody i talk to everybody and it was like all right cool you know you can you know i need to talk to this person to advance obviously and or they kept saying oh you should go talk to them I'm like all right cool and then i was like but wait like this is the open area and sure as shit i broke out and wandered yep. into town and found different people to talk to and other things you would have missed and it's more than ever a game that when you get to every episode ends you get your result screens i was shocked i always feel like i'm being thorough when i'd get the like you know this many people did this on the roof and i was like i didn't even think to go to the roof i didn't even you know early on i was like oh i didn't even do that i missed it yeah i had the exact same thing and even by the time i finished the game i was shocked by how much seemed to branch out depending on how i played the game like i don't think the game has dynamically different endings by the time you get to get to it but things can be affected in the last chapter, like based on how certain characters react or, or, or whatever happens. And I was shocked by the ending I got and then realizing that in my results screen, I could have changed a lot of things that would have maybe had things favor my way. And it makes me want to replay the game and actually do more exploration than I did because I, I explored based on what my objectives in the game were because if you press the pause button, or I think it's the touchpad, uh, it'll come up with, oh yeah, your main objective right now is to talk to Gabe or whoever and then you have like a side objective of check out the record store or whatever I would do those I would knock those out but that would be the bare minimum I would do and then I would go on about my day uh, and every now and then I would do a random thing like I would clean my room uh, uh just randomly on a day because I saw that there was trash there so I was like yeah, fuck yeah. It, I'll clean it and like you know that ended up on the results screen of like 30 percent or whatever like clean their room this percentage didn't um and so it's funny the things that they make matter in those small ways but there also seems to be thing seem to be things that matter in big ways in ways that i didn't expect and i i, I can't wait to talk to greg about it in a spoiler yeah. fashion to figure out like okay what affected this person what affected this because i really want to know and again like that's the thing is they keep it to a small cast of characters in this small town right and even then like you know what blessing's talking about is we had different endings overall obviously but then like you know the penultimate thing of what's going up there was different things based on our relationships with the people in town and i was shocked of like i i knew i liked the game a lot and i knew i, I thought it was something special in terms of life is strangers but like it would have been yeah episode four no spoilers obviously there was two well not there was one you know you find the in life is strange when you find a collectible you pop a trophy like the really hidden ones or whatever and there was one that i found that made me tear up and i was like holy shit like i really love the people in this town the characters they built in the relationships just off of finding this stupid thing and hearing the audio play for it right and then the second one was something i know blessing didn't do based on his ending was running into someone else in town uh that wasn't at the festival 
and helping them through their thing. And like, this is totally a character that I was like, whatever. He's some quirky dude. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care at all about this dude. And then again, by the end of his thing, fucking tearing up. And I was like, holy shit. Like, you're not even the main character. You're not even Alex Chen. You're not even her brother. You're not even like the real like the thrust char- of what this game is. The funny thing is the character that Greg's talking about is a character I did not give a fuck about at all because I didn't run into him. I didn't I didn't hang out at whatever wherever they were at the whole game. And so by the time I got to the end of the game to realize that he mattered, I was like, wait a second, really? And to me, that's a really cool thing. The fact that I would see him pop up every now and then and I was like, oh, you're the sidest of side characters. But there are <laughs> other characters that were probably that for Greg, maybe. You know, like for me, it was uh, uh, a character named uh, Eleanor who I met like in episode, in one of the early episodes. And I loved unfolding her story and by the time i got to the even by the time i got to the end of the game you know like there was a result with her where i was like oh i probably missed one thing i probably missed like one thing in one episode to like uh, not affect this thing the way i wanted to to affect this thing and i i love that you can the, the game doesn't really push you too hard to do those things but if you pay attention or if you just care enough and treat this community like an actual community and talk to people and grow those relationships with the characters, then that can actually affect how uh, uh, a lot of these characters result in the final episode. And I think, you know, that to me was, was something special. And I also love too, that the game has those telltale moments of, Hey, this is an important decision, right? Like usually in telltale, oh, sure. you'll get the prompt of, uh, uh, you know, X person will remember this, but in this game it's very much a, just like a different screen of like, choose this or choose this. Uh, I think the game does a good job of masking a lot of the time, like what that actually is going to be. Cause for me, mm. there were quite a few decisions where I'm like, in my own arguments in my heart, I was like, I'm not going to do this thing. I'm going to do the other thing because, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to result. This seems like it's dangerous or whatever. And I, yeah. I want to go back and I want to do the different, different choices because I, I really want to know how that would have resulted because the game does a, such a good job of just going with the flow of what I do. Andy, I know real, you got a real, question. Real quick. Oh. Go for it, Greg. Finish your sentence. Andy, you have a question. You have something to say, Tim. But before then, yeah, with these choices, I don't think there's like the big ones you're talking about, which is where like time stands still and it literally is like select this or select that and you like frame it or whatever. Yeah. I wish there was more of them. I do agree with you that they're not. But what I love about them is that for the most part, they are very gray. It isn't like, you know, punch this guy in the face, shake his hand. It's not that kind of shit. It is like a thing where I would be like, well, fuck, like this would help her. But would Alex do that? Is that like really what I should be using this power for? Is that how that would go kind of thing? I like that about it. Andy, I'm sorry. What was your question? Oh, real quick. I I was going to talk to Andy. Before we get to Andy, I just want to tell you about our sponsors. Folks, we need to talk about your online shopping habit because if you don't have Honey, the free online shopping tool, you're straight up doing it wrong. Honey is a browser extension that scours the internet like an algorithm pirate searching for buried promo codes. And when it finds one that works, it applies it to your cart automatically, sort of like that mythical hero Robin Hood. We just missed a lot of metaphors there, but you get my point. Kevin and Tim always use Honey for everything they buy personally and for kind of funny because they like saving money and I like that about them. Honey supports over 300,000 stores online ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. If you don't already have Honey, you could be missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by using it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. We never recommend something we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kinda. That's joinhoney.com slash kinda. Dinner time can be chaotic, but with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week and take the pressure off of you. Freshly offers chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals delivered fresh to your door, no cooking required. Grocery shopping and cooking can be a pain, especially right now, and with Freshly, you don't have to. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week so you can keep your fridge stocked and skip the trip to the store. Ordering is easy. Visit Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better for you meals like steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. Freshly can fit your lifestyle with a variety of plans and meals to pick from that work for your dietary needs, preferences, tastes, and family size. Your meals are always delivered fresh, never frozen, and are ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. With new meals added each week, Freshly brings the convenience of chef-made, nutritionist-designed classics right to your kitchen. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash Kinda. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash Kinda for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash Kinda for $40 off your first two orders. It's time to celebrate because the NFL is finally back, baby. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, has millions of reasons to get you even more sight to kick it off. DraftKings is giving new customers a free shot at a $1 million top prize with a total of $4 million up for grabs in Thursday's opener. 
Just draft six players from the season opener, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. So head to the app now. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at a million dollar payday. Download the DraftKings app now and use code KFGAMES. This week, new customers can get a shot at a $1 million top prize and $4 million in total prizes. Enter code KFGAMES to get a free shot at the $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code KFGAMES, only at DraftKings, the official fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Sly dog. Now, Andy, what's your question, finally? I was mostly just going to ask, is this... I guess is your enjoyment mostly out of the the interpersonal relationships and the characters and finding out what might happen with them or is there anything that you I guess really enjoyed about the gameplay like is it more of like do you find yourself staying because of the characters or are you having fun with playing the video game or is this something that if you watched a visual novel of you'd be like yeah this is just as good I mean for for me I enjoy it as a narrative game like i love the characters and i, lo I love I, the characters are probably what i love most about the game but i also say that the plot of the game is really good i really love the main story of the game i think they do such a good job of uh hooking you in and having those cliffhangers between episodes as if you are watching a like a five episode season of i want to say riverdale but i think this is better <laughs> than what riverdale has to offer right but it is like you are watching a a five episode uh a young adult drama you know and i think the by the time you get to the end of each episode at least for me i immediately wanted to keep playing and see what was going to happen in the next episode and for me that was the draw that said like in terms of gameplay i think it is in terms of gameplay it's the same thing as in any other life strange game i know in life strange one you had elements where you could solve things by rewinding time and doing all that shit and this game doesn't have that but it very much is walking around the town interacting with objects getting more story by interacting with certain objects or interacting with certain characters and taking in the the town of haven at your own pace for me that's like fun enough in this kind of game that it really pushes it for me and that's the thing right where i feel like it's such a cop-out answer but it's the real answer of like the choices in talking to people is the gameplay like i you know what i mean like i yeah i if I don't think I would connect nearly as much with the story if I was watching it or it unfold as a movie. And I was like, why would she do that? I want to do that. Blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like the fact it is the telltale. It's just the telltale effect, right? Of like okay. going in and coloring and the coloring book page your way of like what makes my Alex and my story different than uh, blessings. Right. Even to the point of like, and this is something, you know, there's been, I don't want to say there's never been wardrobe changes in these games before. That'd be a lie. Right. But this time around, there's so many more. Yeah. Where it was on the, you know, every uh, you're in, anytime you're in the room, you go to the dresser, you can change how you look and get ready to go out in a new outfit. And there's new outfits every time you go to the dresser, which is such a stupid little thing. But for me, again, made the game so much more personal and made out being Alex so much more personal of like, oh, this is what I want to rock and this is what I want to do. And so the to NWO get rewarded. Shirt. I mean, wear huh? the NWO shirt. Oh, I'd wear right? the NWO shirt every time. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but to, you know, have a make a choice for the outfit and then go to the festival and then have Steph make a comment about what I'm wearing, right? And I, it's kind of that thing of like, I know, right? Like, I'm not going to say anything about it, but it was like, yeah, that's a fucking cool call, call out. Like, and, it's, and, it's cool. And I think this game does a really good job with its uh, objectives as well. And the way that, it, like, from chapter to chapter keeps its that keeps the structure of gameplay interesting because you know it's the, it's the game that it is throughout right it is a narrative narrative adventure game right or what like choose your own adventure practically type yeah. of game but at any given moment you know like you do have the choice of all right go in this go in, go into this shop and interact with this person and you might uncover a cool story because of that and then like that ke that takes you on this you know um like little scavenger hunt type of thing or like i think there are certain chapters that do you shake up like okay cool in this chapter you're doing this thing that's really cool that you know i really i really dig so much and i can't again i can't wait for the spoiler cast because i know me that, and Greg really want to talk about those moments in the game and that's the thing of like no spoilers or whatever but i can assure you right now even if you never play this game you are going to hear so much about chapter three like chapter yeah. three is going to have kotaku articles and all sorts of stuff and like that'll be a fun reaction video to watch too of people reacting to what happens there because they do such a wow that's out of left field and i fucking love it and like, yep. what a cool way of doing that. And I think that's something that like, again, I don't want to talk shit about all the other games, especially because they're not at the forefront of my mind. But I remember. Talk your the, shit, dog. It's our I show. Remember, <laughs> I remember the exploring and the bullshitting, uh, you know, the bullshitting of being these characters like it always is. 
being a little bit more like, well, if I was Max right now, <laughs> would I really be picking up oh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within? Like, this is an under, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you would. It, we all would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the the plot of Life is Strange True Colors, I think gives it so much more room to breathe in a way that is more organic. And I appreciate a couple of times where like you come back and they they reference the fact that, oh man, it's been a while since, you know, a couple of weeks ago that happened. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Like time is passing even when I'm not playing. And that is making it feel like I should be having a beer with this person. I should be shooting the shit with this person. I, I, it, cool. my powers are, you know, so inactive in the way that they're active in the moment, but not all the time. I could be doing something that could help the world or whatever. This is a pleasuring, like, nah, that sounds weird as hell. This is a pleasurable, <laughs> I guess, you know, pace to what this is. And it sets up again how Haven Springs actually is in terms of yeah. like a cool, chill, we're hanging out town. And I think chill is a really is a really good word uh, word for it. Like the town is fairly chill, despite like there being like a lot of crazy things happening. But it's not crazy in the way that in Life Strange One, it's like a high school drama and like you know like there's shit happening in Life Strange One and Two. Like Two has a lot of shit happening too because they're literally on the run. This game, for the most part, is really laid back. But despite being laid back, it's also I think really good at handling emotional moments. Like oh, yeah. there are multiple points in this in this game I can point to to where I felt like I like I I, I really felt what the characters were going were going through. By the time I hit the beginning of chapter two, uh, I texted uh, one of my friends who's also playing for review, and I was like, dude, I like I tear I can't believe I teared up already. <laughs> like I'm in I'm in the the first part of chapter two, and I'm already like you know tearing up, and that doesn't stop the game has so many good moments on that level um and yeah i absolutely love that about it but i do want to shout out like you know greg mentioned earlier the the frame rate which for us was like weird from the get-go but i think we both settled into uh there i think the game also uh well i don't even think the game did crash on me multiple times i like I had a, I had a point where I started writing down the um, technical issues I was having because yeah like I started off with the frame rate stuff and I was like okay, cool whatever I'll settle into this and then there are times where characters would uh, t pose what the first time it happened it scared the hell out of me because <laughs> legit I like I like, I come downstairs I'm hanging out at the bar and um, or actually no I go from hanging out in the downstairs bar and I had to go upstairs to get a thing. Uh, so I go upstairs, I get the thing, I come back downstairs, and I'm like, okay, cool, I can finally set the thing on the table. And then I turn, and I see one of the characters, Jed, just, like, standing there in a T-pose in, like, a, in like a, um, one of the, the booths in the bar. Hello, and blessing. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it scared the hell out of me when I saw it. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, and he's just, like, standing there, like, oh, my God, is this tall dude with a, with a heavy beard, too? And so, like, he just had, like, these dominant vibes to him that, you know, terrified me. But then, like, another time... I had, a, I had a, another T pose mid cutscene, and like a day later, Greg texts me a picture of him having the exact same T pose. Like I never told Greg about it, but he uh, but he texts me the picture, and I was like, Greg, I had the exact same T pose at the exact same moment. And yeah, so like have, there are some consistent bugs in there. I didn't have the crashes like Blessing did. I played on PlayStation Five too. Didn't crash once on me, but yeah, the T pose I had a couple of times. But it's like, I, I and I'm not making excuses. Obviously, you know th those are things. But I think overall, like those were such back of my mind right like oh, it's not yeah. what i want to talk about or what i want to you know i can't wait i will to say like you know when i started taking notes i did count i had three three crashes one of them was like a hard crash that like turned off my ps5 um and then there was a moment later in the game where and i don't know if this was i think this is a bug or maybe it was just like a weird thing that they didn't take out i was in the um chapter that greg was talking about where like i think there's like a festival in the park or whatever i'm like walking around i do go into the city and uh, Alex keeps saying to her to herself, "Oh, maybe I should go check in with Jed. Maybe I should go check in with Jed." And the whole time, I'm like, "Well, I tried to check in with Jed, and Jed didn't have a dialogue option." And I circled back and I tried to check in with Jed, and he just doesn't have. He didn't have anything to check in with. And so, like, maybe that's the thing of they meant to take that out and they left it in, or maybe mm. it was just a weird bug that I couldn't talk to him. But like, I would have stuff like that every now and then. Again, like, didn't ruin the game for me. I still absolutely adore the game, and I'm with Greg. That's one of my favorite games of the year. Um, but yeah, there are those things in there that made it feel a li little bit more telltale <laughs> than uh, Deck Nine, even though Deck Nine at this point, I absolutely love where they're at because, again, like in terms of art style, in terms of presentation, I think the game just looks so good and for the most part runs pretty good. And one thing to toss out, I know we're going long on this one, sorry, Tim, but to toss out about what I think an another thing that they nail and you'd expect it to nail because it's Life is Strange, but to say the, the soundtrack, like they, oh, you know, yeah. Life is Strange games are always great for soundtracks, always great music. 
they nail it again and this time you know alex is a guitar sing- playing singer or whatever right and we are on that journey she's not like professional or anything like she actually picks it back up because you know her brother's like welcome home and there's a guitar kind of thing and so like going through that i really dug and how she how that's how music in general is always used in the game is great is great here and i really enjoyed the added aspect of her being a musician that's something they kept pushing, right? Anytime we see yeah, review, when they would do like the E three things, they would make a big deal about it. Yeah, because yeah. I forget who they brought in to be your voice. She Andy, like, my I'm question: a, I'm a famous singer, and I am doing this. Hey, everybody, it's me. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy Christina from Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> I'm very popular. Um, Andy, are you gonna play Life is Strange? Uh, no, because I know that I would want to play all the other ones. That's just a lot of time. I hear I mean, you a don't lot. Have to do. Like this, I, mean, is I, I, like, I do hope. I do hope that they're all thinking about one day doing like because I mean they're building an X Men universe. Where we just have all these people who oh are all God. off on their own, feeling like a- a- outcasts. Like, <laughs> Les is just like so it that wasn't until Greg said that, that I thought about like, oh shit, they could do a Life is Strange where they somehow get I don't know where the kid from uh, Life Strange Life is Strangers. Up, like, I mean, mine, mine ended up in Mexico. I don't know where yours ended up, but like, maybe, yeah, like, <laughs> maybe they your, can somehow like find them. And what's your superpower? Team? I have acid indigestion. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm a basketball kid. kid. <laughs> a basketball kid. <laughs> I, I would like I. I it's that thing of, you know, especially with the kid and time, and I got to play these infamous games on stream or whatever, or whatever. Huh? How long? Oh, same as always, 10. Like, right around there. Every episode's about two hours. Well, maybe this game, I would say, feels shorter than the other Life Strange games, because I think the other Life Strange games, per chapter, I would have thought they were three hours and maybe, like, 15 hours overall. Oh, man, I always, I always thought like they were right around two play. hours everywhere. I might go back and replay Life Strange 2. It's well, like, here's here's my, my, you know what? Andy, I'm sorry. I was asking you a question. You can fuck right off. Blessing, if you go back and play it, make sure you play it on twitch because have you seen they have the crowd choice extension thing for this where you can let the audience make the choices and like the game has oh, it integrated yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I would love to see do i would love to do a play through that way but i know i won't have time probably uh, here's the thing i'm 38 hours into ghosts and i'm about 30 yeah, yeah, percent of the way through with it you know I, I still <laughs> you wanna, 90 you hours cry at a young adult story no, nah, I want to just yeah, slice do. dudes down with swords. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'm going to answer the, the question for you, Greg, for Andy. But like this, everything you guys have said, I'm like, this sounds like a Gia game. This sounds like uh, I hold the sticks, let her make the choices type sure. thing. Like that sounds really fun, I mean, super narrative based. Funny enough, like given another game we'll probably talk about on this games cast, I think for sure you you and Gia would enjoy playing through this because there's a lot of parallels between this game and a different game we're going to talk about. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You guys ready to talk about that game now? Yeah, I'm ready. Because I am. Let's talk about the Artful Escape, aka the Artful Escape of Francis Vendetti, aka Tim Getty's Game of the Motherfucking wow. Year so far. I have been waiting to talk to you guys about this game for the last week. It has been held up inside me, ready to come out. And I can't wait because I don't think there has ever been a video game that I have loved this uniquely. And from everything I've heard from other people, I am alone in that, (laughs) in that. And I'm so, so interested by this. Normally when we do kind of funny in review uh, and Greg Miller does the plot, he has his own way. But when Nick Scarpino does his plot, he always starts it with what, Andy Cortez? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, he does a little quote. He does does a a quote. quote. He does a quote from it, from the work that speaks for it all. And I want to do that right here. You got to build the hype of your entrance and hype always begins with the early swell and the swell begins with who you truly are. If there has ever been a game made for Tim Gettys, it is this right here. The artful escape. It's coming out September 9th, 2021. Uh, it's coming to, to windows to Xbox game pass and uh, iOS. I couldn't get confirmation on iOS being on that date or if it's coming later. Uh, it's by Annapurna. And this is the first video game by Beethoven and dinosaur a team led by a man named Johnny Galvatron. So shut the oh fuck up, God. everybody. Uh, Get hyped well, about that. From the Galvatron. So. Who is the lead guitarist of the band, uh, the, the the very kind of like cult classic band, the Galvatrons, named after, of course, Galvatron from Transformers 1984, not the Bloodborne character you guys might know and love. But here we go, everybody. I want to read you a description of this video game uh, from Beethoven and Dinosaur themselves. This is a story about great expectations, towering legacies, aliens, folk music, guitar solos, making stuff up and living your dreams like memories. This game's Musical jams. Wonders? 
They're visible. Dude, this game, it's got a stacked cast. <laughs> no. They traverse dimensions. Craft your own stage persona from the sci-fi beginnings of your backstory to the trim on your moon boots. Converse, consult, and chill with all manners of beings, disenchanted publicans, nostalgic villagers, lumbering alien wildlife, and reality-defying behemoths. Shred, soar, and dance across the multiverse. Traverse landscapes made of sound composed by your movement as if the world itself were an instrument so you hear that you've seen the trailers for the last what forever eight years forever right? when it comes yeah. to xbox like every time we see this and every time i'm always like that looks fucking crazy but i don't believe it's a video game it doesn't look like a video what's the gameplay like i just don't believe a we're ever going to get this game and b it's actually a game it just seems like some weird ass interactive movie to some extent because it doesn't look playable and now that i've beat the game I am bewildered at the experience that I had because everything I thought before still stands, but somehow <laughs> everything I was looking at before was a video game. All of those things I remember are in this. They're all playable. So many moments that I'm like, there's no way they're actually playing this. Yeah, you are. This is a 2D walking simulator and that is going to turn off a ton of people. And I don't blame them. I totally understand. This is not going to be for everybody, but this game is for me. And Andy Cortez, I knew that 15, 20 minutes into it. You start playing through. It has this very, very, very. Oh, yeah, you slacked everybody immediately, which you <laughs> never do. I, mean, I was just so shocked by how much I loved it off the, the beginning of the game where I was like, wow, this shit is special. Like, it has elements of it that I have never seen before. And you start going through, and once the title screen hits and it goes through the cast, and you see Carl Weathers, Lena Headey, like all of these like Mark Jason Schwartzman, man, Phantom these, Planet, come on. Exactly. Like all this stuff. I didn't know that. Now, here's the funny thing. I've been covering video games a long time, a hefty percentage of my life at this point. And I react to a lot of different press conferences and all that stuff. One of the only conferences I've missed that you guys have reacted to that I didn't was the Annapurna one a couple like a month or two ago. So I missed that this game even had a release date. I missed that in that trailer, it announced this voice cast. So I was playing this without that knowledge. Greg literally hit up our Slack, was like, who wants this code? And I was in disbelief. That yeah, I was no, like, way. no fucking way was your answer <laughs> yeah. when I asked for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like excited going into it, but booting it up, I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to get into. I, I only have the questions of how is this a game? So I started playing it and it's very, very Bob Dylan, which is something that I don't have many ties to personally, like with my own taste of music and all that stuff. But my dad loved the hell out of Bob Dylan. My mom and dad were hippies in San Francisco. Like that makes so much sense. So I started hearing this. And I'm like, all right, look, on some nostalgia level, I'll give it to this, even though I'm not necessarily a folk music type of person, right? Within minutes, all that shattered. And I'm just like, okay, we're going in a much more Tim direction. This is really interesting. You're in this town. You're talking to these characters. They're building this world with some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a video game. And you see this title screen. It gives me those chills, Andy. It gives me those like title screen hit chills where I'm like, this thing needs to make lists for best title screen moment of all time. Greg Miller. Nip check. Oh, I mean, on another fucking level. Like yeah. legitimately <laughs> to the point that I, there was a moment around the title screen and it was a little bit after because you get to go into the town. You start talking to some characters or whatever. Yeah, real I text quick, Greg Miller. I just, want, I just want to ask you really quick. When you mentioning mm -hmm. you're talking to people in the town, is that voluntary? Is that just cutscene? It's it's a combination. There, there aren't. Uh, it's it's hard to explain, Andy. There's not necessarily cutscenes in this game. It just kind of happens. <laughs> it just kind of happens. And it, okay. it is very much a 2D walking simulator. You're kind of walking through. There's points you're walking by people and their text is popping up as you walk by them. So you're not really like, like it's nine, voluntary, nine but words, I think, yeah, exactly. Like that type of thing. But then there are times you're in a, in a conversation with someone where you're making dialogue decisions to progress the story and, and, and keep going from there. But it was about 20 minutes in a little longer, maybe uh, that I texted Greg Miller and I was like, I'm getting game of the year convo vibes from the, the first bit of this game. This is unlike anything I've ever seen. And then a couple days later, I texted him. I just beat it. Holy shit. It so quickly went from a Greg ass game to the most Tim Gettys thing imaginable. I still think you're going to dig it too. It's journey, but hype, but no, sorry. It's journey, but about hype and neon blue. 
And like, I have never experienced something like this. Like it is, like I said, unlike anything I've ever seen, unlike anything I've ever played where immediately I'm like, Oh, this seems like one of those indie ass video games that's going to get everyone talking and everyone's going to love for this reason or that reason that it's normally a Greg Miller thing. And then it all of a sudden turned into something so different than I expected, but it maintained that quality just in a different direction where it became something that I simultaneously can't compare to anything I've ever seen before and can also compare to 10 million aspects of things where this is an image comic come to life. This is saga mixed with paper girls just as a video game as you're, you're playing through it. And all of that is something that I never really thought I'd get from a video game, but also to say this is a video game in the same way I was just saying, like, it's a little bit everything and nothing at all. It's like, it is a video game, but it's also just a walking simulator in the way that you're just holding right and hitting A a lot. <laughs> like, Did you play Sinar Wild Hearts? Yeah, I did. Is, uh, how can we compare it to that? Is it? That's more of a video game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that I'd say is more yeah, of a that's, rhythm. That's, game that's like a game, rhythm right? game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas this is talking and moving and interacting with the next thing. Yeah, and and there are rhythm game aspects of this that are easily the worst part of the game. Like, undeniable. Oh, like yeah. The, the two, two major criticisms I have are the rhythm aspects don't feel like a rhythm game. And there it is just kind of button prompts. Like, it, it's I rhythm like those. from a dialogue perspective gameplay perspective where you are kind of just hitting things like in a choice manner as opposed to like hitting things to a beat or to a rhythm uh Dude, I, and... I, was, I was rocking out to those because like basically what that is right is like you have your guitar and they'll give you like these it's essentially um... simon says uh, yeah i was gonna say bit. simon says yeah, yeah they give you like a simon says thing and so you are playing your guitar along by pressing what like um, X, but not y, to a beat. The yeah, well, RB, the, the, no, it's like a memorization the, game. The explanation that they give there, uh, kind of early on in the game, like when, when they first like have you go through that Simon Says type of thing, uh, pretty early on, is like now do it to your own pace, like feel out the music yeah. and like I mean, uh, kind of like d d d which I did appreciate a little bit of like try to like not have the game tell you what to do, but feel out the kind of what you want to do with uh the music and the tools that it's you're groove given. on this yeah that's why, exactly. that's why i appreciate it because it yeah. felt it let me be creative you know i felt like i was putting together my own masterpieces yeah it's it's a guitar solo andy like it's it. it's kind of like you you have this kind of you know uh, song that's playing and you're trying to match the the experience of it but it's not necessarily hit this at that time Got it. okay uh, but it's like it's not about that and i think that's the thing is like my my two biggest criticisms of the game are the rhythm gameplay is bad compared to rhythm game uh expectations and the fact that you have to hit a to move through dialogue choices kind of slows things down a bit like i feel like a lot of stuff it's like i would rather just let these voice actors speak and then move on to the next line without me hitting a because is there an the, option for that? Uh, i don't think so okay i i don't know i've been clicking it i i personally like it because like when i'm in oh, i can read faster than i they speak sometimes so i'm able to get through but i i, I hear you yeah so you could do that but i mean you can't just like you need to hit can't a auto play. for it to yeah. progress and like that i think kind of uh is a hindrance to this game because the biggest compliment I have is the pacing of this game is impeccable and the quality of the narrative and the characters and the voice acting is, I, I just think, unparalleled. Where it's like they they nailed the vision of what they were trying to do for this experience in a way that I put up there with Bo Burnham's Inside this year, which is one of my favorite things I've ever Jeez. experienced in my life. Like legitimately. It's very different, but I think that they just fucking nailed this. It is a four hour experience and earlier I was talking about WarioWare and the, the financial uh, kind of demand that that game has for the experience you get out of it. Whereas this, it being on Game Pass, it being, I think even an MSRP of, I think it's $20. Like I can't fucking believe I'll that for the it. quality of um, this experience right now. Cause it is, it's so fucking awesome. And it is one of the best four hours I've ever had in my life. And I can't wait to experience it again. I'm planning on streaming it with Snowbike Mike playing through for his first time. I just want to hang out with him to to see it again because the it is so well written and the dialogue choices you have are so fucking fun. And the amount of times I'm seeing things, I'm like, oh, I remember this in the trailer. I remember wondering, like, how the fuck is this a video game? And I'm like, I'm actually playing it. I can't believe it. Like, it is a cinematic wonderland 
of emotion and color that are all backed up for a thematic purposes and telling this amazing story of finding yourself in a world where there are expectations of you. And I, I am just so blown away by this thing that is not going to vibe with everyone. And again, I understand that, but it vibes with me so damn hard. And I, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about Can it. Can confirm it is $20, Tim. And fuck. And that's $20. And Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, give this fucking game a shot. I, it's so fucking cool. I'm in settings right now, and I can confirm you cannot uh, auto auto move dialogue. Yeah. And, and the, the last thing I want to say before uh, tossing the bless is that for me, I love this game because it is so emotional without necessarily making me cry without having necessarily like character deaths or whatever. It's like characters just mean something to me. Every character in this game matters and has a purpose and makes me feel something that's backed up by an impeccable score and colors and cinematic motions of the camera where the game feels like a one shot God of war style take, even though there are a bunch of cuts, but every cut feels like it has a purpose and it's backed up by a vision and a choice to, to, to mean something that by the time you beat the game, by the time you get to the end, it is so satisfying. It is like, it has earned every fucking moment of you becoming this alter ego of who you're trying to be to, to find yourself. And yeah, I'm just taken aback by, by what this game meant to me. Blessing. What did you think? Terrible. That was all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i so i played about two hours made it about halfway and i dropped off like i i think what's what it does visually and with audio is beautiful you know i think that for me that is my favorite thing about the game is getting in there it's pretty non-stop with how much it throws at you and how much it, it, it goes for it in terms of throwing a bunch of insane shit on uh ins insane shit on screen like right now with what we're looking at i feel like there's so much just random vibrant cosmic uh imagery that is throwing at you in any given moment and i think that stuff is really cool uh gameplay wise like i fell off of it pretty quickly like i it is what you're saying where it's it's pretty much a 2d walking sim uh and with that like i just found myself not interested to keep going through and like usually for these types of games like that's not as much as much of an issue like i'm down with narrative i'm down with like weird shit i'm down with annapurna usually but i don't know like i I couldn't find the hook there for me, if that makes sense. It's an sense. amusement ride, bless. Just take a hit, bro. Take a hit of this I mean, little maybe. Spliff. Maybe I need to smoke you know some of that good stuff. Get a tarantula <laughs> from Snowbike Mike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is one of the ones, though, where I was like, you know what? Like, I respect what this it's is going for. This is gameplay that we're watching it's, right now. Like, I respect what it's going for. It's not for me. Because, like, the I think the thing that I took away from narrative was mainly that it's more of a game about creativity and, like, trying to figure out what that looks like for you. Like, being, having expectations put on you being in a place where you're trying to figure out what, what your niche is and going after that in a way that is super creative and super out of the box. And I think that stuff is really cool, but just the way that it's telling that story just didn't do anything for me. Greg. Hey, how are you? Um, I, yeah, I mean, this, uh, if you would play the game, I, I guess this would be spoilers, but just to place it, because I'm not sure. I started playing last night after I had, I, you know, I've been off, but it hasn't been a vacation. I've been working on baby stuff. So Finish Life is Strange transitioned over to this i'm to the point where uh i am on like the first planet or whatever you want to call it where and i'm going to the guy's office the agent's office or whatever to the guy i need to actually work with or whatever i would assume tim tell, correct me if i'm wrong that's like an hour in i've it's already been so broken up playing that it's hard that sounds to right yeah yeah uh you know tim you put it beautifully i think uh early on of like you vibe with this game or you don't i don't vibe with it like it's one of those it's like psychedelic everything you said everything you and blessing have said right it's like this psychedelic the music is the the thruck the thrust of it it's this you know heavy metal guitar not heavy metal it's this you know operatic guitar i guess you'd Rock say opera. i'm not a it's music a space person, opera right? it's a yeah. playable space opera in like right I was, it's just i've never been into that kind of thing even when bowie did it like it wasn't my thing like <laughs> uh you know so it's like not hitting for me on that level of it's not a it, it, you know it's funny to talk about this compare and contrast with life is strange right of coming off life is strange where it's like that's a world and a story I want to be involved with in this one. I have not run into that hook yet where I'm like, this is a story I want to be involved with. I like the premise of it of like, you know, it's this nephew living in his uncle's shadow and like kind of being forced into this role and him talking about like, I don't, you know, it's not who I actually want to be. And then getting to open it up here and like, you know, at one point, you know, choose your space opera name and go through and be, you know, colorful and stuff. But like, 
the characters I'm being presented with, I'm not like, oh man, I want to know more about you. I want to hang out with more with you. Part of it does feel like that. You know, I think uh, Blessing put in Slack when we were all starting to play it, right? Of just like, this game was designed for people. That, this game is going to encourage people to do drugs or something like that. Yeah, like I, I, I wish I, or maybe this game is, makes me want to do drugs and play it. So it's under the influence. <laughs> and it's yeah. got that like, vibe like to it, which I, I, I mash up with that kind of Adult Swim kind of vibe too, which I like certain things on Adult Swim, but I don't like everything on Adult Swim. And this is one of those things where it's like, I get what you're going for, Carl. Everybody's, the cast is awesome. The soundtrack so far is awesome. The visuals are awesome. It is gorgeous and beautiful. It's just not a, a story or a world I'm connecting with yet. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, like I said, I totally get it. This isn't going to vibe with everybody. I think from a technical standpoint, like it is the the cinematography in this game for a 2D platformer, like the only thing that comes close is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And I think this outclasses that easily. And it's a different type of game. And that is definitely more Ori? gameplay based. Uh, this, it, I mean, the amount of Ori vibes this game gives off is insane, but... On, I, I just think that like Ori is probably not a distant third to it, but like it's a third to the two games I just mentioned. Um, the way that this game kind of like uses the camera to go in and out and have you focus on different characters or different aspects going on while you're still playing it, while you're still the thing moving it forward. And it has, again, I mentioned earlier, like this journey aspect to it where there was a lot of sliding going on. Like the gameplay is fairly limited, but the amount of times throughout the game that I was surprised by being like, fuck, it'd be cool if they just let me do that thing on command. And then you get the ability to do that thing on command. I'm like, fuck, that's awesome. Like, the fact that you're dealing with characters, Greg, you bring up the Adult Swim thing. Like, I, I'm i with you to the extent that Adult Swim, for the most part, does not vibe with me. Like, I don't like that weird for weird sake, like, psychedelic for psychedelic sake, like, whatever. This, to me, doesn't feel like that. Like, this feels like every single thing is purposeful for one unified vision and that vision isn't to be weird so when things get really weird in this it kind of feels like that is to stand out against some of the other stuff and not to say it's not weird the whole game is weird but it's a a choiceful weird where that weird backs up themes and characters and the character violetta the 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 female character that we saw a little bit in what barrett was showing like her storyline is awesome like her going through what she does in her place in the world is just as important as yours. And I think that the choices they make with that and what your place means to her place mm -hmm. is so relevant to where we're at today and all of that. And Blessing, what's up? Do you find this game fun? I, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it is, yes, in the sense that it's hype as shit. And mm -hmm. yes, in the sense that I am feeling all these fun things and at moment to moment, I am enthralled by what's happening around me but like fun as a video game not necessarily there are moments that make it fun like being able to uh like imagine the sliding mechanics in journey where you're sliding down a sand dune but i have a little bit of tony hawk's pro skater doing some tricks while you're doing that that's kind of it and i'm kind of like guitar. well well and you have a fucking guitar it's like what, what's cool is this game seamlessly shifts from you speaking to a character that hates you uh, that is perfectly voice acted with amazing dialogue to speaking to another character where uh, you're hold on. I wrote down a couple things that I just fucking love about this. Um, you got moments where you're like talking to somebody and your options for dialogue are fantastic, totally fantastic or totally and utterly fantastic. And I just love that where it's just like, you're not really making a choice. We fucking get this. It's a video game, but like, like how, stoked about this are you it's like levels of stoked if you like the words rad and dope and stoked this is a fucking game for you there's a level <laughs> you're you're in a mall out of nowhere i'm not going to tell you how you get to the mall because it's fucking awesome how you get to the mall but you're in this mall and when it's asking you are you ready to leave your options are no or yeah i look dope <laughs> and i'm like come the fuck on and if if that was it if i'm only basing this on oh this game gives you options that have funny words that tim likes it's nothing that's backed up with your experience of the mall being awesome, being really well designed to fit the story and make me feel like I'm making a character that I can relate to in this. It's really damn cool and really special, like something I haven't seen ever in a video game. This is one of the more unique games I've ever experienced. And for better or worse, it is what it is. And it is that thing. And it doesn't care if you like that thing or not. And a lot of people are not going to like that thing. But if you do like that thing, you're going to fucking love it. Like, I don't I mean, think there's ever going to be a person that likes this. 
I mean, to come off the bench on it, right. As somebody who's not vibing with it, I pre I'm so happy it exists. I, I mean, again, as somebody who I talked about it, I think during the Annapurna, like uh direct, right. Of like, I fucking love Annapurna and what they do and all these crazy things. And so, yeah, it, I don't, that doesn't mean I'm going to like and play and, and you think everything's a 10 out of 10 on their label, but I'm glad they're still taking chances. I'm glad they're putting something out this more than anything. I'm glad you Tim are so into it. That it's, it's, it struck a chord so much with you. I feel like, I say that about all sorts of different games and it's a rare treat for you to come in and be like, this is the fucking game. And I love the fact that it is so different that it doesn't slap for me or bless in the same way, but you are all about it. And I, I, that means there's going to be an audience that is all about it that way. And again, to what you said, like, which I agree with, it is undeniable how beautiful the game is in motion, how great the voice acting is, how awesome the music accompaniment to the, the product is. I mean, technically, we're talking no slowdown. We're talking uh, just bl- like amazing, blissful animation. And the sound design is unrivaled. Like the this game is so well designed that it's on a 2D plane. But often there'll be times you're in an elevator or going upstairs or something that like kind of bring you to levels. Like it's very well designed level design wise in order to give you like Andy visual feasts as you go through things. Sure. But on top of that, the audio design, every room has its own unique kind of sonic aura to it that there'll be rooms where you're in a, in a hallway. But the next room you're in is a giant concert hall. And then the next room you're in is outer space. <laughs> and it's like, as you're going through those, they sound different. And the way that like the 3D audio or not even 3D audio, but just kind of like stereo audio is mapped is fucking impeccable like this is clearly made by audio designers that love audio and drugs you gotta play this at tim's house you gotta play this at tim's house bless <laughs> um, sounds, like, oh, no. tim ha- sounds like tim had the better experience in bless <laughs> <laughs> i mean I'm with, I'm with greg that like i'm so happy that like there are people that really dig this thing because for me i know i know if they made the same game and it was hip-hop i'd probably be all about it i just don't I care about imagine bless <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, it'll be, be my favorite game of all time. Like, I just don't care about, like, the uh, Bob Dylan and, like, David Bowie of it. Like, I don't, that's not, that's never really been my jam. Like, guitars have never really been my jam. And so, like, playing this game, I'm like, cool. Like, I think I see what is, what is going through here. And I wish there were some gameplay hooks. That way I could at least, like, identify with that. But nothing, like, nothing about it, I guess, in terms of energy and character really speaks to me. Aside from the fact that it's really going for a specific thing, which I, like, which I really respect, but I'm not in like, I'm not the target audience for it. I mean, uh, with that, uh, bless, I'm so with you. Like if this game were about hip hop, it would legitimately be my game of all time. Like my number one, where it's just like, (laughs) holy shit. Like, and that's to me, the testament to the actual quality is, and I don't think I'm doing a good job explaining this, but like I could care less about Bob Dylan and that stuff. So it's like for, for this game to still be as dope as it is to me, like I think, it won me over in a way that I, I wouldn't necessarily care about that stuff. It's we, cheating we a little like, bit because I am into space opera. I am into fucking like 80s metal shit. What's up, Andy? I was going to say, we can all agree Bob Dylan overrated, right? <laughs> I just wanted to throw out a fucking grenade. Fuck you, dude. Like, fuck <laughs> you, Andy. Hey, he just, yeah, I'm playing guitar. Like, uh, Holy no, shit. Bob. Damn, Andy. Damn, no, that was Bob. good. That was good. But like, uh, two more things I want to say is like, I, I love that this game can go from you you talking to a, a human character, like a mom, your mom, you talk to her and it's just the the dialogue and is written so well and so authentically. And then next you're speaking to a character who literally speaks in jazz music. Like they don't have a voice. It's jazz music. That's and it, cool. Fucking is just awesome. Like so much of this is just so awesome and builds upon itself in a way that I, I can't wait to see Mike play through this uh, on, on Twitch because it is so fucking damn cool. Um, and the last thing I want to say that I have a note about is th- this year surprised me with the movie The Green Knight where it's mm-hmm. another thing that n- I hate fantasy. I hate that type of stuff. It's normally not a Tim thing and it won me the fuck over. Even where the Lord it of is, the Rings? I mean, that's, yeah. that is a debatable exception. But uh, Green Knight won me over where I'm like, holy shit, despite this not being a Tim thing, it is so perfect, and I love it. And Artful Escape, I put the in the exact same way where moment to moment, I was captivated by the wild twists and turns I'm taking on this adventure that I wouldn't have ever signed up to go on in the first place. But at the end of it, I'm like, that was one of my favorite things I've ever experienced. So 
shout out to A24 and shout out to Annapurna. <laughs> I, I love the comparison because I was going to make the same comparison, but I'm literally the opposite way because I hated the Green Knight. I, I was going to be like, this feels like playing the Green Knight where like the Green Knight, I was bored out my mind watching and like fell asleep in the middle of it because I didn't like it that much. And this game has the same effect for me. I respect this more than I respect the Green Knight, but but Damn, wow. that is a that is a, a <laughs> Damn, wow. Let's go tell I don't him. respect the Green Knight. Well, <laughs> as someone no who respect, I feel like I was kind of the target audience for this, and like I did not know this game existed before. It was like last week, um, and Tim. It was Tim's reaction where I was like, "Oh man, maybe I should be paying attention to this." Um, I love Dylan. I was raised uh, a lot of that like '60s into '70s music with like Dylan Beatles going into that. Era era to the david bowie era um and i'm i'm gonna contradict you here tim i liked it i i wasn't in love with it oh, i did, uh, i didn't like uh downright hate it um i thought it was a cute coming of age story that used the vessel of the transition of music and performance from the late 60s to kind of tell this story of uh, this kid who feels like overshadowed by, you know, not just, I would say one particular person, but just like the expectations of where music was at kind of at the time in the sixties. Right. And I thought it like, I think it did some de things well. It, like, yeah, I thought it was cool that like Carl Weathers is there throughout like most of the game. And he's, uh, he's one of the main characters and I had fun like chatting with him whenever he popped up and, um, there's some like uh like Mark Strong as uh, as one of the characters that you meet. I thought was like uh, very fun. And uh, Jason Schwartzman, shout out to Jason Schwartzman's character who I I loved, but I don't feel like the game gave me enough reason to love them. But there's just something about like the design and performance from Jason Schwartzman that was uh, that was really fun. Um, yeah, I. Yeah, the gameplay stuff, like I, I like I side with Blessing on there, where it's like I, I felt like you, there were moments where I felt the journeyness of it, Tim, where it's like, yeah, we're sliding down, and I'm just like holding X and like riffing on the guitar, and it's fun. But like I felt like th those moments happened less than I wanted them to, and it felt like the where Blessing was at with like the, all right, like I, I, I'm... F I'm failing to see the the gameplay like capture uh, capture me here and uh, keep me going. Um, that mixed win with like a, I, I do agree some performances are great. Um, I I don't know if it's just like the dialogue that was written or if it was the per performance. There there are some things specifically from like the main character that like made me cringe and I don't know if that's what they were going really? for. Really, like the who that character is. Yeah, especially in like the the last third of that game, I was like, oh, like it, it, this feels like hard to even listen to and I was like skipping through some lines just because of like a, it, it, it felt a little he heavy handed at some at some moments um, but yeah at the end of the day like I, I, I enjoyed it like I didn't regret like spending four hours in this world and kind of like delving into this like era of the uh, like music history that I personally like love and grew up with a, a lot with like what my parents listened to listen to and even into going into my formative years where I'm, I'm still listening to those artists and and stuff like that so yeah i i think if you got game pass and you want to like have like a a fun uh trippy time and you know go on your own make your own space opera type of thing like i think i think check it out for a weekend i think it might be something fun to like have like uh, if you've got someone who like watches video games but it doesn't like necessarily play them it might be like a fun like so let's sit together and like uh, experience this thing together um so yeah and I, if you I, do drugs yeah, and I have done a drug once or twice in my life, and, you know, there's, there's some things where I was like, oh, man, like, this is really fun, but then there's other things where I was like, I feel like I've seen this in, like, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and, and, and things like that, so. Um, Real and, quick. I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It's piggybacking off what you said, but it's a question for Tim. You said, you know, if you have somebody else. So was Gia watching you play this? That got referenced for Life is Strange. Gia was not watching me play this, okay. but... Uh, I've been telling her, like, I, I was like, I'm so stoked for this fucking game. I've been talking to her all about it, uh, but I've been holding back spoiling things because I want to replay it, Got showing it. her it. Um, and I think she's going to be interested to an extent. I don't, I don't think we're going to complete the whole game together. Like that, I think is an important thing to say. It's like, this is not for everybody, but I do think there are cool points. And like, I do want to show her this just to have that moment of like, look what video games could be. Because sure. this game is the, for this being their first video game, like they have sold me away where anytime I see their name, I'm going to buy their pre order their game. I'm in. I'm like, I want this. Like they. Mm -hmm absolutely nailed what they're they're going for and I, I would say like the the stuff that like kind of made me uh, what i was referencing with like a cringy stuff I, I i i don't know if it's because um i was 
raised with that era of music, like knowing so much about David Bowie, and and, and this is very much of like the, the journey of David Bowie, like finding Ziggy Stardust kind of stuff. And there was just like a lot of moments where it felt like. Too, like they were like trying like too hard to like try to tell their own version of that story where it's just like I, I, it, 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 I don't know it, it, a lot of a lot of little little moments didn't uh, vibe with me there but there were still moments that like gave me chills uh, when, you know like when you're riffing and the you know like the music is soaring like I do think the soundtrack is rad as hell uh, even just like environmental stuff and like how that kind of mixes itself into uh, like some of the tracks and stuff and. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I I enjoyed it. I don't know if it'll even be on my top ten games of the year, but I, I I think it's I think it's worth checking out and giving it a try. Well, everyone, I recommend you give it a shot. Let me know in the comments below if you think I'm right or if you think I'm a complete fucking idiot. Either way, I respect you. Only if you're nice and respectful about how hard you call me an idiot. Greg Miller, what's up? For the record, I recommend you give it a shot too. It's on Xbox Game Pass. It's what twenty bucks. We said if it wasn't like, that's a fun thing. I mean, you know. You got to lay it out. Like, I think, I think it, it's what we are. I always talk about, right? This game is a work of art and everybody's going to take something different away from it. But if you have game pass for sure, try it out and see what's if up. If you have game pass, play it for fun. Also, oh, uh, is that you? Yeah. One, of yeah. the greatest, <laughs> one of the greatest writers, like in uh, music yeah. history. Fuck you, Andy. Yeah, have you ever read Tolkien? He's pretty good. <laughs> Tolkien's musical Lord of the Rings, everybody. Hey, let me know in the comments below what you think about this or WarioWare or Life is Strange, True Colors. We're about to do the post show for patreon.com slash kind of funny game supporters where we got a brand new spanking new hot episode of Bless Who. Until next time, I love you all. Goodbye.